Hello everybody, it's Acidic Meta Haven here today. And I want to talk about a tank that I find myself coming back to and really wanting to put the time in, which is the SHPTK TV100, uh, TVP100. So, I mean, that's a long name. But in all honesty, we're just going to be referring it to as like the, uh, the TK TVP100, uh, the only tank destroyer or tank killer, TK, um, in the Czechoslovakian lineup. Now, I, I think this tank is underrated and not a lot of people play it. Um, it blows me away that I don't see these in the matchmaker left, right, up, down, center, whatever you want to say. And also something else to say before we jump into this. I hope you guys have a fantastic Christmas. I hope you have great holiday plans. I hope you do whatever you get to do. Me, I got my new mug. I'm very happy. I'm a very simple person, you know, and I'll just be honest. Thank you, Klaus, for the mug. Now, this is a tank that the reason why it surprised me that I don't see it in the matchmaker a whole lot is because it's a gem in the rough. This is, in my opinion, one of the best tier 8 TDs in the game. And let me explain why. You know, some people are going to stop and say, well, there's the Scorpion. There's the Shaska. There's all these other TDs inside this category. But the thing is, if you take the Scorpion and you take the Shaska and you combine them, this is the tank you end up with. You may not have the Alpha compared to those two tanks unless you're firing the high explosives. And I have some demonstration gameplay to show off of that. Starting off on probably one of the worst maps that you could be on inside this tank, which would be Himmelsdorf. And I'm just going to let this roll. We're going to give it about a minute. But here we are. You know, we're, we're top tier. I mean, this is just abusive. But this is how this tank goes. Whenever you're top tier and you have the opportunity to use that 100 millimeters of high explosive pin, you're going to be throwing out big numbers. 420 is the base alpha on this round. And if you can get them the pin, I understand that, sure, you know, it's the fastest round on this tank at 900, the standards are 887, and then the premiums are 795, while compared to the others, you know, you're going to be looking at a little bit less, you know, like, this is, probably has the worst um, rounds for this category, but it's just, whenever you get them the pin, and everything goes right, this tank is just absolutely nasty. Now, for me, there we go, 446. I'm willing to take a trade for my health for that trade-off because I took, what, 120 damage? And I, I hit him for <laughs> 446. Even if he shoots me twice, the trade is still highly effective. And that's pretty much it for this one. But I have a couple more. Now... Some people may stop and say, it's like, well, what about, you know, going up against tier 10s? Honestly, the standard penetration on this, which is going to outdo the Shaska and the Scorpion and a lot of other TDs inside tier 8, because this is 270 base. Yeah, 270 base. Take a look at that. That's a very, very nice number. Um, for me, I don't feel like I have a whole lot of problems inside this tank i've invested uh i don't know how many matches i've invested inside this tank but i got my first mark on it i guess that's all that counts and i'm gonna let this one run for a little bit too but pulling in what i really like about this tank is its aim time at 1.3 seconds okay like that's extremely fast aim time and then an accuracy of 0.32 um, and then a reload of what, what is this? 3 point, uh, 4.1 seconds, 3.8 seconds with the premium consumable. The standard penetration on this is enough to go through any tier 10. There we go. 249 into the top armor. And it's also an AP round. My teammate pulls in front of me. So I got to kind of do a little bit of a weird maneuver here. Throw out another, there we go. 213, a little bit of a low roll for the 250 alpha on this gun. But that's, that's fine because there we go we put another one in he is completely down out for the count and this is kind of how it goes against a lot of tier 10s in general as long as you know the weak spots the standard rounds in this make really good effects and then your premium rounds a 330 heat pin well that is all you gotta know it's 330 heat pin so jumping back into shaska scorpion the TK TVP right here has the concealment of the Shaska. 245. I think Shaska's slightly better 
I think it's what 234 on the Shaska SC130 PM. Um, but then you take the the reload, the damage per minute, and this tank is already outperforming the SC130 PM and the Scorpion G, like without much of a problem. Then you take the power to weight and mobility of the Scorpion, and you improve it, and then you end up with the TK TVP. This tank is amazing. Now a lot of people will say like, but they prefer the high alpha. Listen to this. You have 135 module damage. If you want to get a tracking shot and you want to keep somebody permanently tracked, activating your premium consumables is going to get you a 3.8 second reload, and you're going to have no issue permanently tracking tier 10s, tier 9s, tier 6s if you want to be abusive. Um, I know a couple of guys that would do it, but then again, I, that's their problem. I would go for the damage on those guys. But the tracking shots in this tank are absolutely amazing. And then just top it off, the high explosive pin. There's there's not a whole lot to go over on this tank. Anyways, let's delve into some statistics for a split second. I'm going to go over a couple of them that to me stand out more than any others. So 10.34 rounds starting off as your base. And then it's 2,585 DPM. This right here is actually really, really good combination just on the damage output for this tank. 66 rounds is enough to get the job done inside this tank and as you can see really good aim time really good gun handling whenever you're at a standstill even at 0.82 for uh, turret rotation now one of the biggest drawbacks of the tank is in fact this six degrees of gun depression but you see you have the time to find a position that you want to get into because of your concealment i don't feel like the gun depression is much of a hindrance on the tvp uh, 100 tk compared to a lot of other tanks that would have six degrees of gun depression because this tank you're playing at range you're playing at mid-range you're pulling in you're firing behind bushes you're firing in the open you're doing what you can to get out that damage now, armor-wise in this tank, your side armor is 40 millimeters, so you can auto ricochet, you know, actually while we're talking about that, but your under armor over here is 20 millimeters thick, so if you ever do feel like you need to try and side scrape, you're actually better off reverse side scraping to try and beta shell, or even using a little bit of your frontal armor, that's 65 millimeters in the low plate, and 65 millimeters in top plate, to try and bait a shell into it, but if they're firing high explosives, um, unfortunately, it is going to hurt, because located right in the front of your tank is your driver, so you more than likely might get him knocked out. Along with that, your ammunition is also right in the front, so you do want to be a little bit careful if you do plan on trying to bait a shell um, into that front armor. If you're going against heat or anything else, heat's going to not have much of a problem to go through that. Um, actually, let's double check that. Now, that's pretty effective against tier 8s and everything else. That should be fine. Uh, against tier 9s, uh, against tier 10s, this will be okay. I mean, but if you have to pull and try to bait something, uh, just keep in mind, you do want to maintain a heavy, heavy angle if you do plan on doing that at all, because that is, it's decent, but it's not going to hold up against heavy fire. Now, for the view range of the tank at 370 meters, you are going to want to take optics, situational awareness, born leader, and a premium consumable to help get that view range up to your cap at 473 meters. But then a lot of people think like 370 is really bad. Well, on a tank that has concealment, a still concealment of 245, you're not going to have to worry a whole lot about how much view range you have. If you're sitting in a bush, you're going to be able to spot out light tanks that are trying to spot you out. So this is all about concealment plays and just trying to move around as quietly as you can. Now, here's the favorite part about this tank for me. 21.88 power to weight, 55 top and 20 in reverse, 15% fire chance and absolutely amazing terrain resistance at 1, 1 1.3, 1.95. That is what's going to be making this tank perform actually really well. It's just your mobility, your concealment, and then you don't have the best view range, but you have decent view range, and that's all that you're going to need. Anyways, let's delve into some gameplay. If you want to, we'll go over my equipment real quick. We have optics, loader, concealment, net, and then for the commander, we're looking at born leader, rapid loading, off-road driving, track mechanics, situational awareness, sixth sense, camouflage expertise, silent driving, and snapshot. Uh, personally, the off-road driving on this, it does not need it. This is kind of my medium tank crew, but if I was going to be trading it out, this would be the trade I would go for. 
muffled shot just to add that little bit of extra concealment whenever you're firing and then whenever you're firing behind bushes this is going to make it even better so then this is going to be your long range trait your mid range trait and helping you stay concealed and use trees and bushes depending on the maps that you're on um, but that just depends like running off road driving let's say on Himmelsdorf it's off road driving is going to help you on Himmelsdorf it's going to help you on all the maps that don't have a lot of concealment so it is actually entirely up to you and what you want to do there but let's go ahead and dive into some gameplay all right, so we're top tier on Pearl River. Um, both matches I'm going to be showing off, I am top tier in both of them. I didn't feel like really showing off against tier 10s. Even though this tank performs extremely well against tier 10s, you can technically play it the same way without much of a problem. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and jump forward in the gameplay to where the combat actually starts. It's a lot of driving. I'll make sure to get my main position that I get into. I love the pull over here in H... 2, G2, there's a bush that's perfectly placed that you're capable of sometimes getting an easy snap and then you have to rock the fall behind to have a little bit of a safe zone to pull into. Now, for me, seriously, guys, I'm surprised that I don't see a whole lot of people playing this tank inside the matchmaker because, you know, the, the rate of fire makes up for the lack of alpha. The, what was it, 66 rounds of ammunition inside this tank? I do believe it is. Yeah, the 66 rounds of ammunition, that's enough ammunition without much of a problem, really. Um, you do run into a cap-off, though, with the damage potential uh, being in the range of 250 times uh, 66, being 16,500. Actually, that's really good as long as you're pinning all your shots, not including what the HE are going to be doing. And if 16 HE rounds, well, that's 16 times uh, brain farts, uh, 16 times 420 Nice. That's 6,720 potential damage. And I mean, sometimes you're going to be using HE to finish off a low health target. And since these are higher penetration rounds, um, HE rounds, you're going to be doing a little bit more damage compared to like, let's say, a 320 at 50 millimeters of penetration. And here against this light tank, I'm really taking my time to find that shell because I don't want to hit the tracks. I don't want to hit any of the space armor. I want to make sure it lands and pins. And right there, we hit the space armor. But because of the reload of this tank, I'm capable of swapping back into an AP shell to put that AP shell in. Right here, switching immediately back to a high explosive round and putting a 399 into the iron rain. And also reloading fast enough to be able to take him down. Come on, is, is this not enough to show it off? The 420 alpha on the high explosives? And then against a lot of lightly armored tanks, you get the opportunity to use it on. Um, I actually... I don't have the replay where I uh, HE'd a Chieftain Mark VI to death in under 20 seconds. Um, but that replay, I actually got ammo wrecked immediately after that kill. I kind of wish I would have saved the replay that would I would have had another demonstration of the high explosives against higher tier targets. Um, but the same thing happened with the Cobra. I didn't kill the Cobra outright, but I did get a total of three shots into it for like uh, 1,283 damage, I believe is what it was. So, I mean, if you can make these shells work, they're absolutely amazing rounds. Now, loading the high explosives, yes, they're 100 millimeters of penetration. You may find them to be in the realm of good and bad, just because if you're hitting spaced armor, you're going to have premature explosions. Um, I kind of wish that we had the HE mechanics of PC, where HE rounds are capable of going through spaced armor and actually dealing damage, you know, like going through spaced armor, going through debris, going through fences, going through everything that they, they need to go through to deal the damage. Uh, a little bit of a blind shot there. Unfortunately, I did not see him. Um, this replay for me was a couple of days ago. I can't remember everything that happened inside of it, but Panther 2, a little bit of a lead. There we go, 251. And then just that reload. 235, finishing off the kill. And by that point, I mean, in 4.1 seconds, I did as much damage as a single round from a Scorpion G, from a single round of like an SU-130 PM. And that's kind of where I'm at with this tank. It's just you have that damage potential within four seconds to be 500. Four seconds to deliver 500 alpha. This is an autoloader at tier eight with its reload. Already up to six kills. You know, if you want to talk about a double tap tank, uh, this is a double tap tank. But in all honesty, the real double tap tank would actually be the LPC. Uh, I'm probably going to be putting a couple of matches inside that to get some gameplay to show off for you guys as well, because the LPC is one of my favorite tier 8s in the game, just because of how it performs. 
and 263. Uh, yeah, we do not get another shot inside this match. Earthshaker, he's off in the distance. I'm just going to go ahead and take it out to the score screen. But this match is showing off what it's like to play with a team and, you know, not really relying on the camouflage and concealment factor of the tank. It's moving with the team and being able to throw out that damage, get the early spots on the opponents, have some HE work to be able to throw out. The next replay is actually concealment spot and damage output inside the tank. So this right here, we are on Fisherman's Bay. Now, I love Fisherman's Bay. This is a great map. There's a lot of sneaky plays that you can make in this map. Now, trees. Hit them. Hit every single tree that you see. Knock them down in a way that's going to benefit the team. Same thing about Westfield. Same thing about uh, basically any map that has heavy crosses that you have trees in the way of crossing. If you knock them down, your team might be able to utilize those trees to be able to cross effectively. Um, I do this all the time to try and help my team be able, being able to cross. But here in Fisherman's Bay, you don't really need to worry about knocking over the trees unless you're using them for a firing position because here on the left side, uh, you actually have the hill right there that's completely defending the team, so there's not much of a point to really care about it. Sorry, I had to mute myself. I had the burp. Um, but there is a, a tank I still don't know how to pronounce the name of, uh, but a T-150. This is another top-tier match. Um... <laughs> now now I feel like I'm just abusing people, but the best part is I'm not really using a lot of heat rounds inside this tank. I'm using high explosives to knock over trees. Unfortunately, um, enemies were close enough. There's actually a setter sitting inside E2 inside those bushes, and I gotta say, he got there, and he was out spotting us for quite some time. Um, in this lineup here, I didn't feel comfortable doing a whole lot of shooting because each time I fired, I got spotted. And now that's the third time I've been spotted inside this position, so I'm kind of thinking, I don't know what's spotting me. I didn't even think about that bush right there, but I knew, you know, there's a couple of really cheeky locations people can get to. And here we go. Right here, I kind of wish I would have loaded a high explosive because I could have put it in between the drive wheels and pinned him for 420 alpha. But, I mean... He's pulling up, and it's not like I have much time. If I would have swapped shells, I would have never had the shot off to begin with. And there's the setter getting spotted inside the bushes. Just, I'm calculating right here. I'm like, do I want to rush? Do I want to pull in? I'm willing to take a hit from the Progetto if he wants to shoot at me. But at the same time, I don't want to take any damage. But I do want to relocate, get a shot off, and then pull up and over. Prepare for a drop down and just worry about mid, because I don't know if they have any shots my way. And I see that the Senjutsu, is that Senjutsu? Is pulling into the middle. He's coming back over to the right side. And that, that thing hauls some butt. I actually wondered, does that thing have like a, a turbo mode on it? Because this thing was freaking, it was chucking when it rose inside this match. Because I came over here and I'm all like, holy crap, look at that thing go. Seriously, for a moment there, I thought it was going 70, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm wrong. I was probably just looking at it and thinking to myself, holy, <laughs> that is fast. Setter's pulling up, the Progetto's pulling up, the Senjutsu's down there firing his flamethrower, I believe he has. I'm not 100% sure if he has a flamethrower or not. But here we go. Pulling in. One shell. 4.1 second reload. Second shell. Already out damaging the um, SU-130PM and the Scorpion within the same amount of time that it takes him to reload. I get three shells off. Setter pulling around. We're going to be going, putting it down a standard round, trying to hit the tracks, trying to do third-person aiming tracks. Aiming in, a little bit confusing. Zoom out to get that higher sensitivity. Putting a nice, good, juicy 400 and... Was that 407 or 427 into the setter? I did not... I could not remember off the top of my head. But this match has kind of been... You know, we get one of them, they get one of us. We get one of them, they get one of us. And if I would have never came down this flank, um, left side possibly could have fallen because you would have had the Senjutsu that was on 21 hit points where someone had to focus him out to put a single shot in. Shiree, the shell flies true. Uh, there is a little bit of a problem with this gun. It does have an arc to it. So whenever you're firing, it's always going to be jumping up and then doing a slight arc with the round because it's a slower AP round. Even same thing about the heat. The high explosives do fly a little bit more straight than the AP and the heat rounds. So there's a little bit of a difference there, but nothing super crazy. But since your shells are arcing up and over, um, aiming at top armor 
or even trying to get like uh, overmatch shots on tanks, if you can try and position your aiming just right, you can actually overmatch the top armor of some tanks just depending on where you're aiming and everything else. Along with that, it's going to be easier to pin top plates because your shell arcs up and over. The same thing happens inside of the, um, the Caliban with the HE, the Hesh, and the AP rounds, and that's why it feels like whenever you're shooting AP out of that, then again, that's what, 292, 293 penetration with that AP round? Why it hits so hard. And here we go, switching into the HE shell, because I'm seeing an M56 Scorpion, tier 7. And watch this snap. I love this gun handling. 415 in the back of the turret of the little scorpion there. Dropping him and making him real easy to take down. 112 hit points remaining. So far up to 946 assistance. 2,420 um, damage dealt. And I don't believe I spotted out this tiger, but we're going to be abusing him a tad bit. We're going to come up. We're, I do believe I shot the dead tank that's in front of him. And I'm trying to find where the Amorak's located. And now we're getting a little bit of assistance off this. There we go. Two shells. Playing aggressive inside this tank. just It's so rewarding to actually try to use your reload inside this thing. It, it's amazing how much this thing can do. Plus, you know, picking up kill shots and taking down targets. Take out the damage in the match. Take out the gun. Drop the gun. Keep your team alive. 8 to 4 already. A mil, 1951. And with the 270 standard pin, if I aimed a little bit better against the turret of the Emil 1951, you can pin everything on that turret with your standard rounds. Even if it's hull down, you can pin it without much of an issue. Um, but then again, the caliber of the gun also matters and everything else. But I mean, 270 standard pin, you're not going to have much of an issue. Here I am trying to find it. Unfortunately, uh, I after reviewing this gameplay, I realized I shot him in the um the structure of his optics so i did you know I, I damaged his optics if i wanted to i could have been loading standards right here and pinning him with standards as well but i went straight to the heat because i had that one absorption and then i was like i need to guarantee these shells because i want to get that damage out uh, up to 1839 assistance 4,081 uh, 4, damage dealt um for me this is not the best matches i've had inside this tank my best match i had inside this tank was actually the first week that it released. I had a 6,700 damage match inside this tank, whatever it first came out. And I was sitting there thinking to myself, this thing is going to be extremely popular with a lot of people in the game. And somehow I was proven wrong. Um, what is it, a year now that the tank's almost been out? And I was proven wrong because no one is playing this tank inside the matchmaker. And it blows me away to see that because... This thing is absolutely amazing. The damage output. You can out damage tier 10s. Um, for crying out loud, you have more you have more potential DPM than a T110 uh, E5. And that has a 6.2 second reload just because your first two shells you're gonna deliver in 4.1 seconds. And then your next shell you're gonna deliver. As time goes on, the E5 will take you down if you're in a head-to-head -head fight within I think 12 seconds and you're technically out because you only have 1,150 hit points and you're going up against 400 alpha, but that's against the tier 10. Against your own personal tier, in the time it takes most 440 alpha tanks to reload or even 400 alpha tanks to reload, you've put in three shells into them, almost four shells into them by that time. So, I mean, whenever it comes down to trading, this tank is really, really good at trading. Um, 250 alpha, that's not a hindrance. The gun handling on this tank it feels absolutely amazing, and I don't have much of an issue with it. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it on the TK TVP 100. I love this tank, and my goal inside this thing is to three market. I want to put a lot of matches inside this. I want to invest a lot more time because for me, like whenever I think about grinding silver, which is one of the biggest things that everyone does inside this game is grinding silver. If you are a dedicated World War II player. This is probably one of the better choices to be grinding silver inside of. And the main reason for that is because your standard shells are 890 silver. Your premium, they're 4,800. Uh, that is a little bit of atrocious, 
you know, just because 250 alpha, and then if, let's say you compare this to any other tank, uh, their premium shells are pretty much going to be costing the same amount. So whenever you fire your premium rounds, you're going to be losing silver um, compared to like a Torvagen or even a 110 or like, a, let's say, um, a T32, which has 320 alpha. Uh, but I still don't find much of a problem with it because your standards are 270 standard pin, and you can utilize these to make them work really, really well. Anyways, guys, this has been enjoyable. I wanted to sh I've been wanting to show off this tank for quite some time, but I've never actually taken the time out because uh, the video that I had prepped for this tank, whenever um, I quit the game, uh, <laughs> I never published. So I'm making a new one. I'm making sure that all the matches are up to date. I'm I've deleted the old video about I don't know seven six months ago. I deleted everything World of Tanks related. That was content related for videos and recordings and screenshots. But I hope you guys enjoyed this one. And just know that the SHPTK TVP100 is completely underrated and an absolute powerhouse with the potential of some really, really crazy DPM with those high explosives if you can get them to penetrate. There's a lot of people that play a lot of lightly armored tanks inside Tier 8. Borasks. Um... SU-130PMs, Iron Reigns, Borsigs, even Tier 10s right now. With the buff that was put over on the uh, the E-100, the um, the Waffle E-100, I have to think about the name of that. This is still a high contender against that tank. I mean, you're going to get clipped out if he's reloaded. But you're going to be able to deal a really good amount of damage in a really short amount of time and punish him each time he pulls out, even with the 50 millimeters of armor that they buffed it up to. And with the accuracy you have, you're not going to have much of an issue aiming wherever you need to aim. The gun in this is highly responsive and amazing. Um, so far, the only map I have not yet played this tank on, which surprises the crap out of me, is uh, Arctic Region. And I got to say, if I'm on Arctic Region on this tank, I'm going to have a blast. Other than that, you guys, have a great day, afternoon, night. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and consider subscribing. Seriously, leave a like. It helps out a lot. Other than that, I'll see you guys in the next one.